if we know that the parent peak has an abundance of 56 and the m plus 1 has an abundance of 4.3, what clue does that tell us? There we go. Okay, good. So what we need to know, we need to know the ratio of the m plus 1 to m. We need to figure out the ratio of m plus 1 to m. Well, here that ratio is 0.04312 divided by 0.56. It's safest to translate these into decimals. This came out to be 0 0.077, which is 7.7%. Well, that's an indicator of seven carbons. Now we've seen how to use the, the carbon 13s. The point of the carbon 13s is it gives you a clue as to how many carbons there are. And the ratio you need, you have to figure out the M plus 1 to M ratio. You don't want to work out the M to the M plus 1 ratio. You want to put the M plus 1 on top and the M on the bottom, because you want to know what multiple of 1.1% is this going to be. So far so good? I think that's all we need to know about carbon-13. By the way, how can you pick out the M and the M plus 1 peaks? Well, remember the M peak is, remember I, before I was saying that the, that the parent peak is the one that's furthest to the right, but I kept saying roughly speaking. I had to say roughly speaking because there is one thing that's even further to the right, which is this little m plus 1 peak. So the m peak, the parent peak, is the, is, the, is the big peak that's furthest to the right. And then there will be a little tiny peak right next to that. That's the m plus 1 peak. So that's how you pick out these two peaks from the spectrum. There's two common ions of bromine. Just like carbon has the ions carbon-12 and carbon-13, bromine has the ions bromine-79 and bromine-81. There was much less carbon-13 than carbon-12. There was only 1.1% as much carbon-13 as carbon-12, but the amounts of bromine-79 and bromine-81 are approximately equal. By the way, these are not exactly equal, but we can approximate them as equal. We can approximate both of these as 50%. Now, what's going to be the horizontal coordinate for this molecular ion? Let's figure out the horizontal coordinate for this molecular ion. Here's my four. 94? 79 plus 12 is 91 plus three hydrogens. 94. Good. So that would be at 94. But this one would be at 96. Now, what's going to be the relationship between their vertical heights? They're going to have the same height because these are in the same abundance. Remember, the vertical height represents the abundance. This will be the peak that represents the methane with the bromine 81, and this will be the peak that represents the methane with the bromine 79. And they should be at about equal heights. So if this is a height of 12%, this would be a height of 12%. Or if this is a height of 33%, this would be a height of 33%. How does this help us? Well, if we look at the molecular peak, and we see that right next to it is another peak that's two units higher up of the same height, that's diagnostic for bromine. This is a way to detect whether there's any bromine in the compound. This is a way to detect whether there's any bromine in the compound. If there is a single bromine in the compound, then the molecular peak will actually be split into two peaks of equal height, like this, separated by two units. So this is a way to detect bromine. 
I think you need to memorize these ratios and these numbers here for bromine. Or maybe they'd be giving you on the test. I don't know. I think you need to memorize those. Okay. That makes sense? Okay. Now there's also uh, chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. Now these do not appear in equal amounts. Three quarters of the chlorine is chlorine 35, and only one quarter is chlorine 37. Actually, these are just approximations, but these are safe approximations. You can approximate these ratios as 75 to 25. It's convenient. These are nice round numbers over here. Notice that this means three times as much of this isotope as this isotope. 75 is three times bigger than 25. So if we had chloromethane, the molecular ion for chloromethane would have these two forms. I should be showing that these are all radical cations, but I'm getting lazy and leaving that out. But these would be radical cations. We need to put a dot plus. To show that they're radical cations, the standard way to do that is to draw this. We, oftentimes, we don't need to specify exactly where the positive charge of the unpaired electron is. We can just put those in brackets. So all of the molecular ions I've been drawing, I should have been putting in the brackets and the plus and the dot, but I've been leaving that out to avoid clutter. Now, where, where, where is this going to absorb? What, uh, what horizontal point? 450. 450? No, oh. 50. 50. Oh. So 35 plus 12 is 47, and three hydrogens, that sounds right, 50. And now the other one will absorb at, how about the one with the chlorine 37? 52. Now so far, it seems like we can't tell the difference between chlorine and bromine because the difference horizontally between the two bromines is two units, and the difference between the two chlorines is two units. However, what about the heights? There's going to be a three to one ratio of the heights. Whatever this height is, this should be one third of that. Whatever this height is, this should be one third. For example, this is probably, I'm sure this is not the true abundance for chloromethane, but to make up a number, suppose that this height was 60%, what would this height be? 20%. 20%. So now we have a way to detect chlorine. If you look at the parent peak, and you see that there's another peak two units to the right that's one third as high, that tells you there's chlorine in the compound. If you look at the parent peak, or if you look at the thing that looks like the parent peak, and then there's something else that's even further to the right by two units, but only one-third is high, it looks like there's, like there's a single chlorine in the molecule. On the other hand, if we look at the parent peak, and there's another peak two units to the right that's at the, at the same height, then we know that's diagnostic of a single bromine. So now we have a way to detect if there's a single bromine or a single chlorine. Again, it looks like we need to memorize these numbers for chlorine and these abundances, and not confuse them with the numbers for bromine. Okay. Now there's more complications. Let's say that you've got two bromines. Well, then there's four different possibilities. You could have 79-79, 79-81, 81-79, or 81-81. These are all the different possible combinations of these two isotopes that we could have in dibromomethane. Why do you only put one? It's, 
We said before that with carbon-13, you would never have more than one carbon-13 because that's only got 1.1% abundance. But remember that all of the bromines are either 79 or 81. These are, these are both very likely. 50% chance of this or 50% chance of this. So these are the, the, the cases that we can get. All of these are going to have important probabilities. So yeah, we want to distinguish this from carbon-13. We didn't have to worry about this for carbon-13 because that ratio was so low, 1.1. But here we can have all of these. Now I need, uh, well, someone with the calculator has to figure out what these weights are. So let's figure out what the weight is of this ion. Seventy-two. What's the weight of this one? 